Hello and welcome. My name is Alan. And we are back with more news and politics for Thursday, August the 29th, 2024. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. First article we're going to look at from the lever. This election, dark money is blackmailing lawmakers. Lawmakers are being forced to negotiate with oligarchs and special interests they can't even identify, which is why we shouldn't have dark money in politics. This week, Colorado State Representatives gathered at the Capitol for an emergency effort to slash state pros property taxes by hundreds of millions of dollars, cutting government funding for public schools, health care, and other essential services. This wasn't a Republican-led endeavor. Democrat. Repub Colorado's Democratic governor called the special session and the Democratic controlled legislature. Nor was it a matter of out of control, uh, out of control state taxes, as the state already boasts an extremely low property tax rate, and legislation passed this May further reduced taxes by $1.3 billion. Instead, lawmakers say they were forced to cut property taxes further to keep measures introduced by a dark money group and a Colorado tycoon off of the November ballot. If enacted, these measures would lead to far deeper property tax cuts of more than two billion dollars per year. Yeah, th this is when you know the money shit is out of control. It's a warning for the rest of the country. In effect, legislators were engaging in negotiations with shadowy groups trying to hijack the state's ballot process with the state itself being held hostage. Representatives and the dark money groups weren't in attendance at the Capitol, meaning that lawmakers were negotiating with political operatives they couldn't see and who were and who are bankrolled by donors the law allows to hide their identity. I don't trust folks who wouldn't even show their face in this room today, said Representative Leslie Harrod to other members of the House Appropriations Committee. The Colorado Special Session hints at a new dark money tactic that could shape state policy or politics around the country. With unlimited budgets and little accountability, billionaires and dark money groups can simply threaten to include measures through citizen-led ballot incentives and force lawmakers of both parties to deliver what they want. Critics say this strategy allows magnets to hijack the ballot while bypassing much of the tedious and expensive campaign process. No one is asking the bigger question, which is, who are we negotiating with and how much is it okay to take a legislative process hostage, said Scott Wasserman, former president and now lobbyist for the Bell Policy Center think tank, think tank a progressive nonprofit focused on economic mobility for Coloradans. We are in a new era in which dark money is now a third chamber in the legislature. Yeah. Honestly, it should be banned. There needs to be a high a 
amount of change in the way money is used. They need to ban super PACs. They need to make it um, government only funding. Yeah. But no, the, these these people who run for government, run in politics, too tempted by that big money. And that's why we are in the shape we are in. Because people thought, ah, oh, we can uh, deregulate it. It'll, it'll allow us to spend more money. Motherfuckers. All you did was fuck shit up. Period. Let's go on to the next story here. ProPublica. Biden EPA rejects plastics industry's fuzzy math that misleads customers about recycled content. The plastics industry uses a contribution controversial accounting method to infiltrate the recycled content it advertises in products. A new EPA policy won't allow it for any products it endorses as a safer choice. Yeah, we, we need to withdraw from plastics. There's still things they make sense for, but we depend on them far too much. Let's go back to glass bottles for milk, glass bottles for soda, glass bottles for juice. A lot of these consumables, that just makes sense. You turn in the glass bottles because glass, a hell of a lot easier to recycle than plastics. Plastics are difficult. You can recycle the really thin stuff. Once you get up to a certain level, though, yeah, it, it's no longer possible. The Environmental Protection Agency has taken the first ever federal action against a system that misleads consumers about the recycled content in plastic products. ProPublica investigation in June showed how the plastics industry used a controversial accounting method called mass balance to advertise pro plastic products as 20% or 30% recycled even if they physically contain less than 1% recycled content. Again, big industry, big business, they don't give a damn. It's whatever helps them save money. It involves a number shuffle done only on paper that inflates the advertised recycledness of one product by recycling the advertised recycledness of another often less lucrative product done purely for marketing. It has been criticized by environmentalists as a greenwashing tactic. According to an EPA policy released this month, companies that want the new federal government stamp of approval for their sustainable products can no longer use such convoluted math. Great. Perfect. This is what I'm saying. Biden, he personally sucked. But, some of his cabinet picks or executive administration picks have done what they are supposed to. 
such as the EPA, the FTC. This is why I'm like, you need to keep Lena Khan in place. And some of these others. There's some though, yeah, you, you can replace, but. Yeah. I I have to say the executive administration itself has some great parts in it. We'll go on to the next story here. Oh yeah, we got some pics from the Appalachia Reddit. Eastern Newt. When I was younger, I used to see these things all over the place. I don't see them as much now, but that might also be one uh, because I don't get out in the really um, rural areas like I used to. I mean, I was raised in a very uh, backwoodsy area. We would see these things all over. Well, even at the schools, you would see their desiccated corpses. I don't know. It, it, I don't see them as much as I used to, but yeah, I remember as a kid seeing them a lot. And again, these images like this, they belong to these people. I'm just using them because, yeah, I find it interesting. We, we got a lot of animal pics today from the Appalachia already, though. Bears. Gotta love some bears. We would actually see a number of black bears. You know, especially when I lived in the more backwoodsy area. You go down the paved road and it's curved all around the hillside. Coming down that hillside, uh, you would see black bears. I, I remember because I was coming down one day. I think I was headed, uh, driving to school. But you would see black bears wander down the hillside. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you will see them. They do come up close. So, yeah. Uh, again, wildlife, you will see a lot. White-tailed deer, they're all over Appalachia. And they'll come into the yards, especially if you like we do. We got fruit trees, or if you grow your own garden, where you've got like green beans and corn and whatever other vegetables you might be growing. They like to come in and, yeah, partake. <laughs> Even if they're not invited. So, yeah, you, you, you'll you see them in your yards sometimes. See them trying to bound across the road because, yeah, I know it's... They've got signs... Please watch for deer because they have a tendency to bound across the road. You'll see the bodies on the side of the road where they've collided with a vehicle. It happens and they do a lot of damage. Sometimes you can get through without with little to no damage, but for the most part, yeah, if they like hit you in the right spot, hmm. They do a lot of damage to the vehicle. Yeah. 
never something you like to see, but it happens. Yeah. So again, you'll see wildlife all throughout the Appalachian region here, especially where I've lived all my life. It, 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 it's interesting, yeah, because besides the bigger animals like that, you'll see squirrels all the time. Uh, we've had rabbits. Uh, set up a thing where they birth the litter of uh, babies under one of the buildings that we've got on the cinder blocks so yeah um, you'll see a number of different birds and uh, of course you'll see snakes Often it'll be a black racer snake. You'll see them a lot. They're they're pretty common. You'll you'll run into copperheads. Be cautious. Little the little copperheads, the young ones, they can't control the venom, so they can be some of the worst to run across. So yeah, you can live, survive a copperhead bite, but it also can kill you. It's one of those things. Um, and then of course, the big one you have to worry about around here if you're looking at snakes. You don't see them uh, as often, but you will run across them. Timber rattlesnakes. They are the same rattlesnake as uh, the famous flag, Don't Tread on Me. You know. Because. In the early days of the country, this region was the outskirts. And so, yeah, the timber rattlesnake was one they didn't like. You, you, you'll run across the eastern diamondback. The further east you go. But yeah. More here in the Appalachian range. You'll run more likely into a timber rattler. They're supposed to be. More potent. I think they have the second largest set of fangs for rattlesnakes, so yeah. Second or third, I can't remember. But yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. Anything you run across, typically you'll have to go into the actual woods for. You'll run across bobcats. Um, lynx, although we've had lynx get on the outskirts of the yard before. Uh, saw in the yard the other day a crane, so yeah, you, you'll see a lot of different wildlife. Just thought I'd show off some of the pictures, because there's a lot of wonderful opportunities to see wildlife if you live around here. Let's look at some data from data is beautiful Whew. the highest level of speeding tickets 
per population density. Yeah, the deepest blue right here, right in the center here because it's a deep blue dot right there, which is, this should be Chicago, and then this would be Cleveland. Yo, Cleveland, what the hell y'all doing? <laughs> Seriously. Because, yeah, you have Cleveland up here by the Great Lakes, so the furthest northeast, about in the center, Columbus, they still got a good number of tickets. And then down on the south west of the state is Cincinnati, so yeah. But uh, Cleveland, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> and you'll notice the poor the poor areas in the country, especially places like the South or the Appalachians, we've got a lot of, um, yeah, blue. <laughs> You don't see as much in here, but to be fair, there's a, the population density is real low, so it's understandable. California, let's see, this, that would be Los Angeles. And that, I think Vegas is down here, so. But I think Reno's up here. What the hell's this? What's going on, Nevada? Yeah, here's Vegas. Maybe it's closer to Reno, but yeah, Re Reno's like in the bend here. Hmm. That's interesting. Is it just y'all speeding trying to get from Reno to Vegas and Vegas to Reno? <laughs> Is that what's going on? Yeah. But here on the East Coast, the Cleveland area of Ohio, uh, right in Chicago. Let's see. <sighs> Sorry, I'm yawning so much here, guys. This is in North Baton Rouge, I believe. Because I know New Orleans is down here. I may be wrong about that being Baton Rouge, but... That's what it may be. This. That's in. Yeah, that's right around Atlanta there. Which the flow of traffic goes quick anyway in Atlanta. So yeah. Over here. Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. But, yeah, the flow of traffic. And, uh, yeah, speeding tickets that happen based on their population density, how often the speeding tickets are handed out. Still, you got to look at Cleveland. What the hell, Cleveland? Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> 
Presidents and Economic Data. So we have the year, the president, federal revenue in billions, federal spending, or federal revenue in trillions, spending in trillions, differential inflation, GDP growth, unemployment, and S&P year-to-date. So, we start off with Clinton. That It's not his full term because you have one term and then missing a good portion of it is first term. So, But, we actually get into the positive, which was the last time we had positive uh, a positive budget we had a reserve didn't have a deficit we had a reserve <sighs> yeah because you can see these are positive the rest Minus, 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 minus. Last time we had a positive in as far as our spending to debt. It got as good as 0. 0.42. <sighs> Inflation were kept to minimals. Uh, GDP growth, four point about four percent, give or take. Unemployment it started out high, but he kept lowering it. So yeah. S and P year to date, I still don't know what that is, but yeah. Um, w Bush. He got he managed to keep the positive for the first year after that yeah we started to accumulate that high debt inflation it stayed low until you get last couple years four oh four oh eight yeah See, Clinton kept it. 338 was his highest. And this stayed pretty normal up until here. We jumped over 4% under Bush. You look at GDP growth. It was growing good here, and then it hits a wall under Bush. Do -do 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 Grew by point. One point point one. Every other year it was like all this, and then it goes. Whew. You look at unemployment. Unemployment stayed good under Clinton. Bush gets it. Five, 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 six, four. He gets it down pretty decent there. But it's back up to 5 and 7.3. Bush sucked ball sacks. So, yeah, both terms of Bush. Now, both terms of Obama. He inherited Bush's mess. And yeah, struggling with the debt differential, but he slowly brings it back under control. He got it down to 0.74 from a negative 2. Inflation, he brings it down. He gets it under 1 at one point. GDP growth goes back into the positive. After Bush had drove us into the ground. Unemployment 
thanks to Bush, was high. We dealt with it for a while, and then he slowly brought it back down to a normal rate. 4.7 in his last year. We get the Trump term. Oh, boy. He inherits a great differential from Obama. First year, second year, third year is not bad. Fourth year, he he sucked balls. Inflation. It wasn't bad, wasn't bad, wasn't bad, wasn't bad. So there wasn't any real inflation issues under Trump, but the COVID bullshit would change that. So even though it wasn't immediately felt, yeah, it was coming un thanks to Trump's policies. Then we had GDP growth. It was doing fair, 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 and then it falls off a fucking cliff. Unemployment. Do uh, yeah. He was bettering it. We bettering it. And again, fall off a fucking cliff. He blundered COVID. And that's where a lot of these negative numbers come from. Biden took over. And differential, he started with a tough one because he inherited Trump's mess. But he slowly started cleaning it up. So, yeah. Inherited Trump's mess in inflation, but he, he slowly started shrinking it. Had GDP growth immediate, um, immediately. Biden just went poof, grew it. And that's how we were able to sustain everything. And then unemployment. He dropped, he, he fixed the unemployment and brought it down after a disastrous moment from Trump. So, yeah. But, yeah, this makes you miss the Clinton years. Anyway. And, yeah, I like this request by musical artists to not use their songs at Donald Trump events. Those who have requested, they stop. Rocket Man and Tiny Dancer by Elton John or his representative. So it's by the, the artist or the representative. Some, some of them have passed and stuff, so. Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, Purple Rain, Prince, High Hopes. Um, it's either the Smiths or Panic at the Disco, followed by Please, 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 Let Me Get What I Want, Smith, Panic at the Disco. I'm not sure whose song is whose. Heart Gone, Celine Dion. But those who have requested, he stop. Now we have those who have sent cease and desist letters for the song Living on the Edge, Aerosmith, Happy, Pharrell, uh, Don't Stop the Music, I think that's Rihanna, ain't it? Yeah. In the End, Lincoln Park. Uh, Fortunate Son, Credence Clearwater, In the Air Tonight, Phil Collins, I Won't Back Down, Tom Petty, Losing My Religion, and Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. You Can't Always Get What You Want, um, Rolling Stones, and Sinead O'Connor's version of Nothing Compares to You. And finally, we have two instances of filed lawsuits. 
One for Rockin' in the Free World by Neil Young, and the other being Hold On, I'm Coming by Isaac Hayes. So yeah, there's a lot of artists who are like, yeah, we or artist representatives who are like, yeah, we don't want you using our songs. So, don't play them. <laughs> I just, I thought it was hilarious. Let's see, NBC News. They have officials probe death of Wells Fargo employee found in her cubicle four days after last scanning into work. Denise Prudhomme, 60, was found dead on August the 20th in her Arizona office. Police say the preliminary investigation shows no signs of foul play. So the last time she scanned in, was four days prior. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably not foul play, at least the com uh, of which the company took part in or anything. Because, I mean, if you're going to leave a body around for four days. Sixty-year-old Wells Fargo employee scanned into her office in Arizona on a Friday on what appeared to be an ordinary work day. Then four days later, she was found dead in her cubicle. She was 60, Denise Prudhomme, found dead on August 20th in her office in Tempe. She had last scanned into the building at 7 a.m. on August the 16th, a Friday, and there were no further scan-in or outs of the office. So, by that accounting, she didn't leave that Friday. That we know of. Now, she may, she may have left, but didn't have her badge. Sometimes you don't know where you placed it, you misplaced it, you need help getting in or out of the building. Tempe police responded to the Wells Fargo office at, in the 1100 block of West Washington Street after on-site security called about an employee they believed to be dead. She was pronounced dead at 4.55 p.m. Still waiting for a cause of death. Uh, but right now, no obvious signs of foul play. Yeah, not clear how she'd gone unnoticed for so long. Away from the main aisle. Still, you think if she had been dead that long. An employee who spoke on the condition of anonymity said that a colleague found her at her desk while walking around the building and that several people had smelled a foul odor but believed it to be faulty plumbing. So yeah, she had already started the decomposition process. So she did start producing the odor of death. Uh, Wells Fargo confirmed she sat, as a, sat at an underpopulated area of the building. We are deeply saddened by the loss. Our thoughts are with her family and loved ones, and we are in contact to ensure 
they are well supported during the typical time. It is said that it is committed to the safety and wellness of the workforce and is reviewing our own internal procedures after the event. Hmm. That's pretty much it for the story. Last paragraph is just counselors. Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. This is from the Denver Post. Racist signs targeting migrants and Kamala Harris. Posted at Denver and Aurora bus stops. Yeah. Blacks must sit at the back. Commas migrants sit in the front. Wow. They were able to boat them in there. That is... <sighs> Racist and anti-immigrant signs that also targeted Vice President Kamala Harris popped up Thursday in multiple bus stops along Colfax Avenue in Denver and Aurora and transit agencies in at least one other state reported similar incidents. Shows you the people backing Trump. <sighs> this is from AP News. Woman found dead before police kill husband on I-95 bridge and discover boy's body in the vehicle. Police say a man who was being pursued in the killing of a woman in New Hampshire was shot by police and tumbled from the I-95 bridge that connects the state to Maine. Police then discovered an eight-year-old boy dead in his vehicle. A man being pursued in the killing of his wife in New Hampshire was shot by police and tumbled from the I-95 bridge that connects the state to Maine. Eight-year-old boy found dead. The boy's death was not caused by gunfire from three law enforcement officials officials who discharged their firearms after the man stepped out of his vehicle and raised a weapon after failed attempts to negotiate with him. Mm -hmm. I've seen too much BS to really give the cops any true credit, so I'm a bit concerned on that. Because there's a good chance they're lying. After being shot, the man fell more than 100 feet from the bridge into the Piscataqua River, where his body was retrieved by the Coast Guard. The Piscataqua River Bridge was closed for seven hours before reopening during the Thursday morning commute. Traffic was backed up on both sides. Episode began with a man calling police shortly after 2 a.m. Thursday to report a domestic altercation with his wife in Troy, New Hampshire, where police found the wife's body about 100 miles away in a home at a home in the western part of the state. Police tracked the man's vehicle to the 4,500-foot-long bridge, 
span that connects Portsmouth, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to Kittery, Maine. Tens of thousands of vehicles cross the bridge daily. One Maine state trooper and two New Hampshire troopers fired when the man emerged from the vehicle and raised his weapon, Ross said. Witnesses reported hearing gunfire shortly after 4 a.m. Police didn't know the boy was in the car and discovered his body in the vehicle's back seat after the shooting, said Ross, who stressed that it was abundantly clear that the boy was not hit by any of the bullets fired by the troopers in the confrontation. A state police spokesperson declined to provide details, but said that assessment was based on observations. You know, maybe they didn't hit the boy. We don't know. But again, there's too many issues to trust them. Uh, no names were released. The family had recently moved to Troy and police were having difficulty tracking down family members to make notifications. And an autopsy was scheduled Friday for the woman who was shot, after which more information on the investigation will be released. Uh, between 70,000 and 80,000 vehicles used the Piscataqua Bridge each day according to the main department of transportation cameras see what i'm having difficulty with is what was the cause of death for the child you say the police shots did not hit him. Okay. Have they decided, have they suggested a cause of death? That's what I want to know. And nothing. Nothing on it. This is from Rolling Stone. Jack White says he's suing Trump campaign over Seven Nation Army video. So yeah, this connects back to the chart we saw earlier. Trump, you're going to have to stick to Kid Rock, Ted Nugent songs for your uh, campaign because yeah, nobody else wants anything to do with your ass. Don't even think about using my music, you fascists. Uh, Rocker writes, after Trump A uses White Stripes classic in a Twitter video. It's probably their best known song, Seven Nation Army. Boom, 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 boom. Has that signature bass line. Even though Jack White has stated, I don't know why it's so popular, it's... You know, it's not even one of my favorite songs that I've made. But yeah. Here we go again. Jack White is promising to sue the Donald Trump campaign after a Trump aide used a white stripe song in a video of the former president posted on social media. Just a week after a similar incident involving a Beyonce song and a Trump AIDS video in an apparently since deleted tweet Thursday, Trump Dire Deputy Director of Communications Margot Martin shared a video of Trump boarding a plane to campaign events with the white striped Seven Nation Army soundtracking the 10 minute clip. Boom, 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 boom. It's a catchy song. But yeah, I, I just thought it went well with the chart we saw. This from the Independent. Trump will serve six to nine years behind bars if he is convicted 
of the January 6 charges, one of his former lawyers predicts. Yeah, uh, it's one it, a former lawyer he had. Uh, White House lawyer anticipated that he would be sentenced to six to nine years if convicted for his alleged efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Special counsel Jack Smith filed a superseding indictment against the former president on Tuesday, keeping the same four criminal charges intact but trimming some down some of the allegations in light of the Supreme Clown Car's immunity decision last month. In the wake of the new filing, Ty Cobb, an attorney in the Trump administration, discussed Trump's chances of spending time behind bars. It's a forceful indictment. You can't read this and not understand the crimes that Trump actually committed. If convicted, Trump could face up to 55 years in prison. Cobb didn't think he would get the full sentence, but believed he would serve six to nine years behind bars. So yeah, and and these were the same one the courts have been trying to protect Trump from. Because the Supreme Clown Car said he had immunity for so much bullshit. And then Eileen Cannon tried to, or essentially said, no, they, they don't count. And dismissed the cases. And Smith is like, uh, fuck you. We're, going, we're getting this done. Because just because you're lackeys doesn't mean he's going to get away with this. And all I can say is, go for it, Jack. Get him. Now, whether the cases will get to complete is hard to say. If Trump wins, these will be gone. They're, they're, they're done. If he loses, then, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But, yeah. From Reuters, Israel, Hamas set three day pauses in fighting for Gaza polio shots, the World Health Organization says. Uh, Israel's military and Palestinian militant group Hamas have agreed to three separate zone three-day pauses in fighting in Gaza to allow for the first round of vaccination of 640,000 children against polio, a senior WHO official said on Thursday. The vaccination campaign is due to start on Sunday, with the pauses scheduled to take place between 6 a.m. and 3 p.m., said Rick Peepercorn, World Health Organization senior official for the Palestinian territories. Now, here's something to consider. Oh, how wonderful. They're going in to do vaccinations for polio. Guys. Boys. Girls. Children of all ages. They are purposely committing a genocide. They're not allowing much aid of anything in if they can help it. Yet they're allowing vaccination. Why do you think that is? 
Oh, wait. It's probably because members of the IDF don't want to go in and end up catching polio themselves. So, yeah. That's the only reason I see that this is happening. Otherwise, they wouldn't give a damn. They've shown they don't give a damn. So, yeah. Don't, don't give Israel any fucking credit for this bullshit. Now we're going to watch some videos. UN condemns military operation in occupied West Bank. by Israeli security forces in the occupied West Bank risks seriously deepening an already catastrophic situation. Israel's operations in Jenin, in Tubas, and in Tulkarm today takes the overall death toll in the West Bank since 7th of October to 637 people killed. Many children have been killed while throwing stones at highly protected Israeli security forces, as have other Palestinians posing no imminent threat to life. Thousands of Palestinians have also been arbitrarily arrested and tortured, subjected to unrelenting settler violence, severe restrictions on their movement and expression, with their homes and property destroyed or seized, or forcibly displaced. Israel, as the occupying power, must abide by its obligations under international law. The Israeli security forces' use of airstrikes and other military weapons and tactics violates human rights norms and standards. Yeah. Hamas, oh, they're throwing stones. Oh, they're shooting rockets. They're throwing stones. The rockets, they have no real control over. All they can do is fire them in the direction. Israel has guided missiles and rockets, guns, armor, don't tell me this is a fucking war. Fuck. The Netanyahu government and the IDF. <laughs> yeah, this, he, okay, here we got a video. If you're white or black voting Republican, you're voting for the re-enslavement of black people in America. And, yeah, it's... I'm like, how are Republicans getting away with this? Well, let's, let's watch this and discuss here. Remember when I said this to you back in 22? In an attempt to weaken the power of the black vote, politicians in the state of Louisiana and Alabama are headed to the Supreme Court in order to redefine blackness and who can be black. That's right, in 2022, white men are going to the Supreme Court to decide on who can be black in this country. And then I said this. And if Brown is overturned and enslavement as punishment for crime is not written out of state laws, then all of that takes us back to Scott v. Sanford, where the Supreme Yeah. Scott v. Sanford is often considered one of the worst fucking decisions in Supreme Court history. It happened under the Taney Court. And yeah. It was a really screwed up decision. Because it basically said, yeah, your property. 
You're not people. There's no reason a white man should respect you. <sighs> and the fact that even before that, they're debating on what qualifies as a black man. I mean, seriously. <sighs> Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution does not apply to black people free or enslaved and that the Negro has no rights that the white man is bound to respect. And remember, historically, Negro did not just simply mean black people. It also included indigenous people as well. Well, yesterday, August 25th, 2024, the Republican Party came out with this. Kamala Harris can't be president of the United States of America because black people aren't considered citizens under the Constitution. That's right. The National Federation of... <sighs> you, you, you would think, you know, this was settled with the 13th, Amendment But apparently there's people who think otherwise It's complete stupidity part of the reason I don't have any respect for Republicans anymore cause they're dumb dumb sons of bitches Republican assemblies has cited the infamous 1857 Dred Scott Supreme Court decision which stated enslaved black people weren't considered citizens. And they did this to prove that Kamala Harris can't be president of the United States. And this is the paperwork they filed to do it. They just didn't attack Kamala Harris. They also said the same thing about Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramaswamy. Cue the music. I never thought the leopards would eat my face. Oh, I never thought the leopards would eat my face. <laughs> but they are! Every non-white person who supports the Republican Party supports a party who believes you shouldn't even be a citizen of this country. Black Republicans, especially you, and I see you all over the country, doctors, lawyers, nurses, friends, ex-cons, you're supporting a party who doesn't even think you should be a citizen of this country. How dare you? And you sit there proud chanting, make America great again and let's take America back to when it was great. They're talking about taking America back to the 1850s. That's where you want to go? That's where you want to be? So remember what you're voting for this coming November. You're voting for or against the re-enslavement of non-white people. That's what's on the ballot in 2024. Yeah, I don't think it would ever be accepted. But I can see Republicans trying to do it. Because it's something their dumbasses would try. Honestly. All right. Student pro-Palestine demonstration in University of Michigan was attacked, stopped, and the pro-Palestine protesters were arrested by the police. The Zionist student protesters were also present in the same space and were left alone. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Yeah. 
You notice they always say, back up, back up. They know you're not a threat. They just don't like being recorded. That's what's going on. That's the truth of the matter. Again, there's reasons I don't trust the fucking police anymore. Okay, this is from WFP, the World Food Program. World Food Program temporarily suspends staff movement across Gaza following a security incident that targeted a World Food Program vehicle. Again, this is more proof that they don't want Palestinians helped. They attack groups like that. The World Kitchen, the, the World Food Program. I think they've attacked um, UN vehicles as well, if I remember right. The bastards don't want any aid getting in because they don't see Palestinians as human. So yeah. Fuck the Netanyahu government. Fuck the idea. This is a Massachusetts officer, Matthew Farwell, charged with murder by strangulation of pregnant woman whose death was ruled a suicide. Yeah. A young pregnant woman's death was ruled a suicide. A former police officer is now charged with killing her. Federal prosecutors say former student police officer Matthew Farwell killed that 23-year-old young woman in an attempt to cover up what they say was years of sexual abuse that started when she was just a teen in a youth police program. When it became clear to Mr. Farwell that he could no longer control Senator Birchmore, he allegedly silenced her. Permanently. These are the moments the FBI SWAT team took 38-year-old former Stoughton police officer Matthew Farwell into custody this morning. He's facing one federal charge, murder of a victim or witness. Matthew Farwell's gun and badge did not create him authority to violate the Constitution. And it certainly didn't entitle him to sexually exploit, abuse, and rape a child before killing her and her unborn baby in an attempt to cover up his alleged crimes. Federal investigators say Farwell met Sandra Birchmore when she was a child at the Stoughton Police Explorer Academy, a youth program for young people interested in law enforcement. He befriended Sandra Birchmore, contacted her online, went to the library with her, became friends on Facebook, essentially groomed her. And then he committed statutory... You, you see... All these freaks on social media crying, oh, it's drag queens, oh, it's um, trans people, they're the predators. No, looks like to me it's police, priests, you know. I, I don't see too many, if any, 
actual drag queens or trans people, you know, being a predator. Hmm. Rape by having sex with her when he was a 27 year old police officer and she was just 15 years old. Federal prosecutors say for eight years, Farwell continued to have sex with Birchmore until she got pregnant at 23 years old Jeez. with a child they say is his. Fearing she would tell people about the years of sexual abuse, investigators say Farwell strangled the young woman, staging her death to look like a suicide. He allegedly attempted to cover his tracks to literally try and get away with murder. And he almost did until today. Now, Farwell pleaded not guilty in court today. If convicted, he would face life in prison or even death. I hope they send him to life in prison and he becomes somebody's bitch. Don't drop the soap, motherfucker. Finally, last video we're going to look at. Yeah. This is a video from the Lincoln Project they released talking about Project 2025. And I think it's a really well done video. Because, yeah, it gives a scary look of what actually could fucking happen. Under Project 2025. What these red states want to fucking happen. Driver's license, registration. Here you go, sir. How's your day going? That's your daughter? Sure is. Abigail, right? How do you know? Were you about eight weeks pregnant? So you've been spotting recently. <sighs> See, that shouldn't be their fucking business. It is big government sticking their nose in. So yeah, fuck the fuckers who think this is a good thing. This is big government sticking its fucking nose into the people's business. You've had any, uh, Cramps or nausea? That's personal. You've been taking your prenatal vitamins? Excuse me? Are you taking me for something? Where are you heading, Abigail? To go see my older sister, Natalie. Well, that's strange. This says here that Natalie's at a concert in Dallas. And your navigation is sent to a, a women's health clinic in one of those states. We have the right to travel. Not anymore. They muted abortion in abortion states. Wow. This is fucking insane. That it wouldn't fully go down like this. But yeah, this is the kind of dystopia many of these motherfuckers want. Step out of the car. Please, officer. Both of you out now. You, sir, are under arrest for crossing state lines to obtain an abortion for a minor under your care. And you, young lady, well, you're under arrest for evading motherhood. Some of it, well, a good portion of it is used in hyperbole, but yeah, it gives us a good look into how 
these freaks think. You know, this shouldn't be the government's job. I don't care who you fucking are. You say God wants you to do this? No, there is no God, you dumbass motherfucker. All I see is a bunch of jack assery you know this is women's health we're dealing with not something you go you shouldn't do that cause my bible tells me you shouldn't Ridiculous. <sighs> I yawned it a lot. But we'll go ahead and end this episode here. As always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting sources and links in the description box below the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, later.